At 11.14 p.m., multiple interwoven stories in the film come together. The connections between the events are not immediately evident, but are gradually made clear by a succession of flashbacks that gradually fade away. After drinking, Jack, Henry Thomas, is seen driving at night along a road while on his cell phone. On the dashboard, the time is 11.14 p.m. Something suddenly slams across the windshield as he passes under an overpass, causing him to veer off the road. When he pulls over to check the damage at the deer crossing sign, he discovers a body with a severely disfigured face next to his car. He panics and takes the body away as he notices another automobile coming. The driver, Norma, Barbara Hershey, of the car that approaches him presumes that he struck a deer. Over Jack's objections, she offers to call the police, saying that it won't be a problem because she has a new cell phone that she never uses and because she is acquainted with the police chief. Jack declines Norma's offer to drive him to her house to wait for the cops. Jack makes the decision to conceal the body in his car's trunk after she leaves. When he gets back in the car to leave, a police cruiser approaches from behind. Jack is speaking with Officer Hannigan, Clark Gregg, who notices his peculiar behavior and asks him if he would be willing to take a breathalyzer test. Instead, Jack asks a sobriety test, which Hannigan conducts. When the officer calls dispatch to inquire, he learns that Jack's license has been suspended for DUI. Jack is informed by Hannigan that he has been arrested and that his vehicle will be seized. Hannigan shackles Jack with a cable tie after discovering the body in the trunk and instructs Duffy, Sean Hatosi, and Buzzy, Hilary Swank, who are already seated in the rear of the cruiser, to move over so that Jack can fit. While Buzzy and Hannigan debate about who should move over, Jack is able to get away by pulling his pocket knife from his pocket, cutting the cable tie. Duffy and Buzzy escape as Hannigan chases, leaving the cruiser door wide. When Jack crosses a property with a dog and security lights, the owner, Norma, emerges as a result. Her husband Frank, Patrick Swayze, just called to tell her that their daughter Sherry, Rachel Lee Cook, was killed in a hit-and-run accident, so she is understandably distressed and searching for him. At this point, Hannigan catches up to Jack, and Norma lashes out at him fiercely with a flashlight, blaming him for her daughter's demise. Tim, Stark Sands, Mark, Colin Hanks, and Eddie, Ben Foster, three teenagers, are raising havoc by driving about hurling objects out of Mark's van's windows, including a book they have set on fire. When Mark becomes preoccupied with Eddie urinating outside the van, Sherry, who is crossing the street, is hit and killed. When Duffy approaches the vehicle carrying a rifle, they halt but quickly leave the area. Tim discovers that the accident also resulted in the van's window snapping shut, severing Eddie's penis as Duffy shoots on the departing van. Tim tells Mark to stop, and Tim then returns to look for it. At the scene, Tim is approached by the paramedics Leon, Jason Siegel, and Kevin, Rick Gomez, but he manages to flee and return Eddie's severed penis. While taking his dog for a late-night stroll, Frank finds his daughter Sherry's, Sherry, car keys next to Aaron's, Blake Heron, dead body in the cemetery. Frank places the body in Aaron's car's trunk, believing his daughter is to blame, unintentionally locking the keys inside the body. He enters the vehicle through a broken window and proceeds to a bridge. In order to dispose of the body, he drops it over the bridge, where it lands on Jack's car, as seen at the beginning of the movie, forcing him to flee from a passing car driven by Duffy. His dog flees while carrying his bloodstained jacket. He pursues it and ultimately captures it. When he notices the flaming book the kids flung, he sets his jacket on fire with it. When his wife, Norma, spots him, she gives him a ride home and instructs him to go in search of the deer that Jack is purported to have struck. Late at night, Buzzy is employed by a convenience store. Duffy, a friend and co-worker, shows in, and they start talking about Sherry's pregnancy and how to pay for an abortion. After the store has closed, Mark and Eddie arrive, but Duffy permits them entry. They go there to buy the things they will use to break the vehicle windows. Duffy explains to Buzzy his scheme to steal the $500 from the shop after they have left. After Sherry arrives, she enters the cooler with Duffy. Buzzy unintentionally discharges a bullet through a glass door while tinkering with Duffy's handgun, the one he planned to use to loot the store, almost missing Duffy and Sherry. Duffy asks Buzzy to let him steal the money when Sherry leaves. Buzzy opposes, worried about losing her job, but concedes after Duffy insists on shooting her in the arm to make it appear as though a real heist took place. He shoots her in the arm, calls 911 for her, and then hangs up while she is still on the line. Duffy searches for his keys as he barely avoids the police, who are approaching more fast than he anticipated. He passes by Aaron's car as he is leaving, where Frank has parked it and is getting ready to get rid of Aaron's body. 
After that, Duffy saw Sherry parking and tells her he discovered the money. He sees her die as she gets out of her car and fires at the kids who hit her. Based on the description given over the phone by someone, later identified as Sherry, Officer Hannigan then takes him into custody for shooting at the van and for the store robbery. When Buzzy refuses to reveal Duffy's identity, she is detained as an accomplice. To have a sexual encounter with Aaron at the cemetery, Sherry leaves her home. Aaron is standing next to a tombstone with an angel made of stone on it. The huge stone head strikes Aaron in the face, quickly killing him, breaking the angel's neck. When his body collides with Jack's automobile, this is why his face sustains so severe damage. The set of keys that Frank had earlier discovered is left behind as Sherry flees the area. To replace the angel head and frame Duffy, Sherry borrows her father's temperamental automobile, drives to the convenience shop, and returns with Duffy's bowling ball. As she leaves the store, she witnesses the shooting and calls the police with a description of Duffy. Sherry leaves the bowling ball in the grave when she returns and discovers that Aaron's body has vanished. She tries to depart, but her car won't start once more. She uses her cell phone to call Jack. The phone call that the movie opens with continues to explain to the audience that Sherry's pregnancy is really just a ruse to extort money from Duffy and Aaron so that Sherry and Jack can travel together. During the call, Duffy shouts Sherry's name from the other side of the street to let her know he has the money. When Sherry hurriedly hangs up, the phone rings again as she is crossing the street. Distracted, Sherry stops in the middle of the road and gets struck by the van that is driven by Mark, Tim, and Eddie. The time is 11.14 p.m. on Sherry's cell phone when the camera moves to her.